Hey, hey, welcome to Film Fanatics, three film geeks discussing movies both new and old. My name is Dan. My name is Justin. And I'm Joe. This week, the wait for Star Wars fans is finally over. The Force Awakens is here. It uh, shattered just about every record there is. Uh, opening day, opening night, opening weekend, many, many others. Uh, so let's hear about The Force Awakens, Joe. Well, The Force Awakens is, of course, the epic space opera film that was directed, co-produced, and co-written by J.J. Abrams. And I should say, before you continue, please, that uh, this is going to be a spoiler-free uh, review. We always do spoiler free as much as we can on the show. Yeah. So uh, you know, if you're listening and somehow you have not seen The Force Awakens yet, you're safe. Um, you're safe. That's true. So yeah, one continue. of the, one of the rare shows that will probably be the case. Uh, now, of course, this is the seventh installment of the main Star Wars film series, and we've got some returning people. This is well known: Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, and Carrie Fisher. We've also got some new additions like John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Lupita Nyong'o, and of course Andy Serkis, Donald Gleason. Anthony Daniels, Peter Mayhew, and the great Max von Sydow, though, to be fair, he's not in the movie for very long. You can draw your own conclusions there. But he's pretty much in every sci-fi movie ever, so it was kind of good to see him as an early face. Yeah, he gets around. Oh, yeah, he's he's literally, literally any sci-fi franchise you can think of, he's probably been there somewhere. Mm-hmm. He's a great actor, though. But uh, The Force Awakens is set about 30 years after the events of Return of the Jedi, and it follows young Rey. She's a scavenger on this planet, basically waiting for her long-lost parents, apparently. Finn, who is a former stormtrooper who gains a conscience and defects. And Poe Dameron, who is apparently the best fighter pilot in the Republic, fighting for the Resistance. And they're led by some veterans of the Rebel Alliance, like Han, Chewie, Leia, and many others. And they fight against Kylo Ren, who is the newest dark Jedi villain, and the First Order, who are descended from the Galactic Empire. It's basically the, the Empire again. Uh, the heroes primarily fight to stop yet another new weapon that's created by the villains to try to destroy and take over the galaxy, and they have to try and find a missing Luke Skywalker. Uh, this movie is quite possibly the most hyped movie of the year, and maybe in quite some time. Uh, and yeah. uh, it's quite understandable. Star Wars is one of the biggest franchises ever, pretty much the biggest franchise ever. And uh, it, there was this huge marketing campaign, as you guys know, like months and months beforehand you know just piled into this movie to, to really i think oh, it was everywhere in absolutely i think nothing else has demonstrated disney's power and once again though much like with the marvel films i feel like disney you know kind of st- sat back and let people that love star wars try to create something as well as they could for the fans and i feel for the most part they succeeded uh the film definitely has many scenes that bring back this uh, majestic wonder that i think is really essential to the spirit of star wars but doesn't feel like it's the prequels or even necessarily the original trilogy but trying to be its own thing which i think works a lot of the time and there are quite a few references obviously to the previous films though i would argue sometimes the this film does try to borrow too many elements from previous films and i would dare it to try to be a little bit more experimental in its plot lines but i think the characters were enjoyable i wish we knew a little more about them but I really thought the acting was really good from both of them. There was some really good chemistry. A lot of good humor in this movie I think fans will enjoy. Uh, the f- special effects were quite dazzling. Uh, the editing was pretty good. I was not bored throughout the movie. I was good to see some familiar faces again. There is one scene in particular that involves Han Solo that is uh, was very emotional for me and was probably my favorite scene in the movie by mm-hmm. far. Probably the best scene in the movie. And if you've seen it, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, for the most part, I think it's good, um, but like I said, there was something about the movie, which I will admit is a, a little hard for me to explain, and maybe it requires me to watch it again. It didn't feel like it had this quite the same epic scope as the other Star Wars movies did, mm. and I'm not sure if that's... Even the, the prequels. Even the prequels, because mm. the prequels were bad in a lot of ways, but they still felt big. They felt grand and epic. This movie was trying to be more personal, which I thought was good, but it sometimes felt like it detracted from the epicness of the story. Like, even involving this uh, giant super weapon, the way it's shot, you don't really get the same tension that you did when the Death Star pulled up in the original mm. film. In, in comparison, you just don't. And maybe that's because it's kind of treading along the same lines again. But to be fair, that's mostly minor nitpicking. As with not quite knowing the characters enough, I feel like we knew them well enough. But we could use a little bit more, at least in comparison to The New Hope. Uh, the only real major negative of this film is... For all the Star Wars films, uh, thus far, I believe you have to take every film in and of itself as its own singular narrative, as well as something connected to all the others. I think each film should work on its own, to some extent. This one, you know, like a lot of the other films, you have that tension based on how scary the villain is. Compared to 
virtually all Star Wars villains thus far, no matter what they're going to do with him in the future, as of this movie, Kylo Ren, uh, started off like a kind of interesting villain, a little menacing, uh, but once something happens where we learn a little bit more about him, which is incredibly obvious, by the way, uh, he becomes a far less intimidating villain, mm -hmm. leading to the climax of the film, which once again leads into the lack of epicness, because it, the special effects were good, but in terms of scale, it's going to sabotage how seriously they take this villain in future films. Everything else other than that, I thought worked pretty well. This one, I might be a little below other people. I still thought it was a very good movie, but not not quite on the hype with other people. I leave it with an A-. minus. Okay. Well, as you guys know, I am the least versed in the Star Wars universe. There's two films I'm even missing ever having seen. That's Revenge of the Sith and The Attack of the Clones. So I sort of went into this with no real expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously the fanboys, you said it, Joe, you know, have been hyped about this for a year Ages. plus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, ever since the, the first trailer started showing up, oh my God, it's Star Wars, you know, it's back. And then... <laughs> You know, the, the one where they showed Han and Chewie, yeah. more head explosions. Um, uh -huh. But I was just kind of like, all right, well, more I mean, I'll watch it. have to watch it for the show anyway, so I may as well enjoy it. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I saw it with, with you guys and uh, a whole group of other people at the Midnight Show, which was fun. I, I figured if I was going to watch it, I wanted to do so with a lot of people to really kind of get the vibe of, of the room. For the first, like, 15, 20 minutes, maybe, I was kind of bored with this movie. Oh. And then once the story really begins, around the time that Finn and Ray meet and start teaming up, then I was like, all right, you know, I I'm I'm into this. And then once Chewie and Han showed up, huh. maybe like a scene or two later, then I was like, okay, now I I'm definitely on board <laughs> with this. You know, where is this going? What's going to happen? It's funnier than I remember other star wars films being it's uh, often been called when i've talked to people it's by far the funniest star wars movie yeah and and uh, i <laughs> think that's enough. a good thing yeah. intentionally you so. know yeah. I, I mean I, i've talked to a few fans who did not care for that because they thought it was too silly hmm. um but personally I, I thought it was good i think it added something a little bit different that we hadn't seen before i mean i think the franchise has always had just to varying degrees a sense of humor yeah it's just been more I think it's just more apparent in this one than in, than in other installments. Well, this one's a little more meta and tongue-in-cheek, though, yeah. about some things. That's true. Which I like. This one's more like one-liners and uh, the Simon Pegg character, who I didn't realize that was him, but he had some, some funny bits. Some funny scenes with Stormtroopers um, and stuff. Yeah, was fun, you know, so I, I liked BB-8. I thought he was cute. Um, I didn't... Oh, is it a she? The, the cast and crew have... have Unofficially identified BB-8 as a girl. All right, sure. Um, she was was fine. Uh, I don't think I like her as much as R2-D2. I kind of missed him a little bit in this movie. He shows up a little bit, but not much. Uh, I think Kylo Ren is an okay villain. You're right about that. That's about the best I can say about him. Yeah. I, I, I would like to know more about his background. Now, we get, like you said, you know, sort of a little bit as we go along... But it's still very minimal. It's still not enough. And it still would be nicer plot-wise to have a deeper connection with his character. Which would affect certain other scenes even more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were a couple other minor things that, that bothered me here or there. But, uh, honestly, I thought it was pretty enjoyable overall. I'm going to leave it with a B plus. Justin? You'll be happy to know, guys, uh, before Justin starts, so thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the one main point I put out in my, my reviews um, as you guys know I, I talked to you guys a lot about how I hated the, the BB-8 droid and how stupid I thought it was uh, but I absolutely loved that character I liked her a lot <laughs> honestly she she I guess is probably was probably my favorite character in the movie wow and, and I will go so far as to say two things perhaps bold things but I really believe this I think that she is the best developed droid character in the entire series she really okay. is. And I even like her more than R2-D2. Wow. Yeah, no, wow. I'm actually I'm actually in agreement. I, not to I have a lot of love for R2-D2, okay? I, and I, I understand that, but I don't know. I If you want to take likability into account, R2's always been kind of a jerk. BB-8 didn't uh, have to be. Not always, but... To C-3PO, he's abusive husband. Well. <laughs> <laughs> not enough C-3PO in this movie, though. I'll say that. No, well, hard, again, that, hardly any. That was... Uh... That was an odd bit. But no, for all the aspirations and 
obviously top-notch people working on this. It should have been a critical blockbuster, and rightfully so. Instead, it's a good start to what I will happily argue is sequel baiting and Ooh. so, so much more. Some Justin well, hate. To, to be fair, though, before you continue, it is pretty critically loved. I mean, it's in the 90s on Rotten Tomatoes. Honestly, people are starting to complain about it a little bit, so that will change mm. with time. Um, change with uh, time. Believe me, the criticisms were... Like, less than a week of it coming out, people were already, like, taken to the internet to, to whine, but... Wow, nerds about a always sci-fi... Do. Yeah, about a sci-fi movie? No kidding. That's true. But anywho, <laughs> um, the new additions I was worried about, fortunately, they all basically stand on their own. Really, like, the uh, dynamic between Finn and uh, Poe fairly early on, though... Not enough Poe, man. ...cut painfully short. Yeah, he for... You know, they still market him as, like, being one of the main characters, but if you compare him to the other two, he's not really in it that well, much. <laughs> Production gives a little bit more indicator of that, which indicates a little bit more about why that was. Even so. Which, once again, makes me call J.J. Abrams' directing style into question, but... Your third act rule with him still, I think, is an effect here, too. Oh my gosh. It, ridiculously so. I The end shot is great. The problem is... Sequel baiting hardcore? Sequel baiting hardcore. Oh, well, yeah. Which I, think... I, I understand it. They knew this was going to make a ton of money, so episode eight is coming in twenty seventeen. We but, get it, but, but still, give us enough to be okay with. Well, this is the all thing. I can say without giving spoilers is one it. person who is top build should not be top build at all. I, I want to say um, I'll tell you. Okay, this is one minor criticism I have for the movie. When they said that the plot of the film was about looking for somebody, I knew somebody wasn't going to show up till the very end, which was true. And being a big fan of this character and this actor, I was a little mad about that. And I, I kind of felt like, can we give us a line, a scene? I know he's not doing a whole lot right now. He retired from his other big thing mm -hmm. to do this. So, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, but look, you know, this movie was so under wraps. And if they're going to talk about here's who's in it, you know, you, you're going to do the promotion tour. Look at Meryl Streep and Suffragette, everybody. I think it's you know, worse than that. People still though. complain about it. I well, think... well, obviously they complain about it because it's Star Wars, not Suffragette. But I do think it's worse than something like that, though, where this this person is basically the center of this franchise, and they they go at him as being a big part of movie when he's he not. Is, he's not. He has spiritually two seats in a sense. True. You know, he's his presence is certainly there, but you know, we we could. I'm just saying, like a scene or two. It, they still could have ended on a. The way they did it, but a line exchange, anything, mm. you know, what do you nope, think? We just that? get a... a for me, no, it wasn't. I mean, I think that they needed to tell people, hey, look, you know, here's the cast, whatever, whatever. They're they're trying so hard not to give any spoilers for anything. That's true. That yeah, I, I get it. I'm I was fine with that. I, I wanted, I just wanted more of that character, which isn't really a negative for the movie, but I wanted more of him, mm -hmm. you know. I really did. And, and no, I, I get that the whole movie is basically the journey and second one's going to be when we start laying some ground, but we need a solid part one before we say, oh, don't worry, we'll take care of it in part two. And I, I, I don't like, care how much money you make. And I feel like it, it was a solid movie. It, and it doesn't hold together quite as well as its own film. No. So you don't think it was a solid movie? Do I think it was a fun movie? Yes. Do I think it was an entertaining blockbuster? Yes. Do I think it was a solid written standalone movie? Absolutely not. Okay. So so what's your grade? I'm intrigued. <laughs> this is where I'm, it gets... I'm terribly sorry. I've been... <laughs> That's all right. We, we got to talking. I just didn't... Wanted to make sure you got it in there. But no, uh, th this one's a... This one's a B. I, I, like mm. the, I like the fan service. I like the fact that there's more... It's a bit more approachable than I would say the prequels were. Like, the prequels... They tried to dumb it down, but somehow ended up getting more complicated. It's true. With, for some reason, deciding we need an explanation for the Force with politics. This one, I mean, for the most part, I feel like both kids and adults will have no problem keeping well, up with it. I, I, that's true, and I think that that definitely makes sense. And I hope we do get to maybe do a little podcast about it. I know I suggested it to Dan, maybe going through all the Star Wars movies, maybe when you see the other ones. Mm. But uh, one thing... One thing I one of my issues with this movie that I will give the prequels points for was at least trying to do something different and not relying on the previous films. Where this one heavily modeled mm -hmm. after New Hope. I, mean, and, oh, I would agree with that. And not not even by the only one I've seen multiple times. <laughs> not even by narr <laughs> just narrative standpoints, blatant plot points right. copied, pasted. Because Abrams is a big fan, which I get, but you're towing that fine line between callbacks and being your own thing. Well, Nostalgia will only do you so The reason I think that Abrams did that, though, was because how poorly the prequels were received. I think he wanted to make it known, hey, you know, this is 
not the Phantom Menace all over again. This veers a lot closer to the original prequels that I, or this, the original films that everybody loves. Well, and you know what? In all honesty, had this movie come out maybe like ten years earlier or so, I could have understood that. But the Star Wars fandom has grown, and people have accepted things beyond the original movie. There's comics, there's video sure. games that are accepted as different takes on Star Wars through novels. So if he just said this is going to take place directly after that, he didn't need to constantly assure this is like the old ones. Well, I will say this: Justin said there's a lot of you know fan service and callbacks and everything. To be honest, and I I couldn't take points away from the movie for this. Okay, because really everyone's seen it and is well 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 versed in it uh-huh. but there there were definitely some things they were talking about that i didn't know what what was happening hmm. you know they mentioned a certain planet or a certain person and I, and in context i'm sure it made a whole lot of sense is so there a I trash compactor i i didn't you didn't get the trash you got the well, trash i got compactor. that justin I'm not, <laughs> no 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 I, I wasn't i'm not you know <laughs> walking around <laughs> drooling here like i get that but there were some things i didn't get and i just sort of figured all right well i can't take points away from that because literally everyone it's else such in the theater big... has seen the original trilogy probably 20 times each maybe more you yeah. know so but yes i agree there were a lot of references to that original and, movie and specifically mostly i didn't mind that but it's like i said i didn't mind the jokes mm-hmm. but i i don't like literally copying aspects of the same plot this movie was basically new hope redone in a lot of ways it really was. Well, classic Abrams. Into Darkness equals mm. Wrath of Khan, like, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, once again, playing it a little too safe. And that's yeah. that's and I get it, and I understand that, but that's one of the movie's weaknesses is it does rely a little too much on the past. Mm-hmm. So hopefully as this franchise goes on, it can fully be its own thing. Right. I'm really hoping for it. So you don't want an Empire Strikes Back clone? I swear to God, if they if they model it, I know it's I know that a director would want to do that. You know, to play it safe. Well, I mean it's Ryan Johnson next time, so so not not quite as much love for Star Wars in in this room as in some places. No, t- to to be honest, gentlemen, it was one of those experiences where I left the theater really really happy, and then one thing kind of irked me, then another thing irked me, and then there was the ending that really irked me. I was okay with it until um, Kylo Ren took off his mask, and then things went downhill for me. Mm. To be honest, when that happened, I was expecting okay, this is. This is Adam Driver. I'm expecting Francis Hodd to start like leaking into this. <laughs> it, it's it's going to be hipster emo. I didn't think he was a great choice. He was better than I thought he was going to be. I'll say that much. I mean, it's not... It's, I typically like him, so I was intrigued to see what he was going to do. Well, I don't know but... if he was the best pick for casting, but like I said, the direction and writing of his character thus far is... Poor. Not not made. It's poor. It's right. not made for for a Star Wars film. Well, it's it's weird because he's on the bottom for villains for me. He's on the bottom. Okay. Think about we've, that. <laughs> we've introduced we've introduced the new protagonists, and strangely they're limited, but a little bit. Now we've introduced the sort of but not really new villain. Yeah, probably to, not. to explain it more would would give spoilers. Yeah, he, he probably won't be as things go on, but we'll see. I'm more interested in his boss actually. Yeah, to be honest, because. His two or three scenes were much more interesting to me than who I'm just going to call Sith Thanos. But the whiny, the, well, yeah, I mean, but you know, the whiny, he's still better than Hayden Christensen. See, I don't know if we're getting it too far into spoiler territory, but let's put it this way: you say that I felt like he was a little too much like Hayden Christensen, which, from a character standpoint, if you want to follow the prequels, <laughs> actually makes sense from a casting decision. But if there's something to not take from the prequels, Hayden Christensen is. Right up there with Jar Jar, you know he's he's right up there. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I did not but from the half hour of uh, the third one that I saw. Um, all right, well, yeah, I guess not in love with it. I mean, listen, I, I would be shocked if it was really on. You know, yes, it is getting critical love, but I would be extremely shocked to find it on any critics' top ten. I don't know. Critics' Choice has already got it on the short list. I don't know why. Well, it's a big, popular, successful movie. They'll feel obligated, some of them. Yeah, and now, do I think that it might get nominated for Best Picture? I do. It won't win, though. It will never win. But it'll no. get nominated. But I actually think that there's a strong possibility the it will sh- get nominated. The sheer popularity, they'll have to give it that nom. Well, yeah, I mean, the you know a lot of the Academy voting block, I'm sure, are... You know, Star Wars fans. The, first, the original it. motion picture was nominated for Best Picture. And the Oscars is always trying to appeal appeal 
you know, the ratings have been dipping for a few years. Every time there's a huge blockbuster that gotta, comes out, you know, hit, Avatar, man. nominate for a bunch. Titanic, nominate for a bunch. Gotta be hip, man. So, All the money. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, all right, well, the Facebook group that we have is Film Fanatics with an exclamation point, and the Twitter feed is at Film Fanatics Pod. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already. And uh, thanks so much for listening.